Okay, so I'm going to be talking about the Duffy blood group system. So what is Duffy? Just the one that has something against malaria or something? Forgot. Yes. <laughs> yep. It most certainly is. So your Duffy is FYA and FYB. So they are codominant alleles. They are what's special about enzymes and Duffy? Are they enhanced or destroyed by enzymes? Destroyed. Yep, destroyed. They are well developed at birth. Now, 68% of African Americans, so 68% of African Americans are FY. A negative, B negative. And what's special about this, Lily? Was it what I said earlier? Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. Um, it has something against malaria currently. Yes. So if you are um, A negative and B negative for Duffy, then um, then you have a higher resistance to malaria infection. So higher resistance to malaria infection. So the way to remember that is neg A, neg B. Makes you negative for malaria. So, and that's because they have a greater exposure to malaria, right? Over African, there? Yeah, African Americans in general have a greater exposure. If you think about the places where these uh, malaria positive mosquitoes are, is going to be in um, like Africa and um, South America is your other one. But in Africa, there is a great, great risk of dying from malaria. And so these people who have, you know, like your sickle cell, um, sickle cell traits specifically, or um, the Duffy blood group system, where they have a higher resistance um, to that malaria infecting the red blood cell, um, then they're, they're passing on that gene more than if they were to, so they're not dying from malaria, so they're reaching reproductive age, and so the people with these high incidence antigens or, um, or like sickle cell traits, uh, are keep, are passing on those genes, and that's how you get such a high percentage of the population being positive. And now another um, inter interesting fact about um, FY, this one's going to be A positive, B negative. So if you are Duffy A positive, B negative, then this can cause dosage problems. And now what is this? Homo if you have Duffy A positive, B negative, are you homozygous or heterozygous? Homozygous? 
It's going to be homozygous for A. Okay, I guess this is what's confusing me because when you look on a chart and it says, uh, it's got a zero and a positive, then that is hedro. Why is it not here? So if you're heterozygous, then you'll have, you'll be positive for Duffy A and Duffy B. Whereas if you're homozygous, you'll have one positive and one negative on the codominant alleles. All right, but on the chart, on the, on, you know, on that chart. Uh-huh. Which, which one? On the chart where you're uh, rolling out stuff and you've got like in the ducky you've got the uh the uh the negative and the positive why is it uh hedro where it's homo here i guess this was confusing me It is your, um, it's when, um, Duffy's, Duffy's your weird one when it, when it gets to that. Um, cause Duffy can have your FYB or just FY without anything, which makes it, Duffy's that one where you, uh, that we were talking about when you have to assume the, the, um, genotype based on the phenotype. And so Caucasians are usually homozygous for Duffy A which is FYA, FYA. And then your um, African Americans are usually heterozygous for um, WA. So they'll have either FYA, FYB, or FY without a letter there. And that's the one that can cause dosage problems. And that's where, and I don't know the logistics of how, how they decide um, or I guess so much of, of the difference in FYB and FY without F just Duffy. And I wonder if it's not like a extra antigens in a system or something like that. So hedro is always going to be the same and homo is always going to be different, positive and negative, right? Well, it's hard to say always in the lab, but um, it's more like, okay, so if you have, let's say you have, uh, normally for your, your A, B, and O, you can have like, let's say you have A, A, or A, O. So the difference here is going to be Duffy A and Duffy B. So if you have Duffy A and you don't have Duffy B, then you're going to be homozygous because you still have to get they're still inherited codominantly. So you know if you don't have B, then you have to have double A. But if you have Duffy A and Duffy B, then, um, then you're going to be heterozygous because you've got both. Two different ones. Okay. So if you're negative for A and you're positive for B, then you're going to be homozygous because you only have one of the two. They're going to be both the same. that make sense and then yeah, the I guess, go ahead I guess what I'm getting maybe I'm getting confused with the next chapter because I thought it was just different when we were looking at the charts and Kim was going over them and it depends on the on the on the um, antibody too or the antigen that we're that you're talking about on the anti antibody screening and when you do the antibody screening, it makes a little more sense once you do it out all together. And then you can look at the different reactions and see which reactions are stronger and which reactions are weaker. And, um, you know, if they have, if they treated them with enzymes or if they didn't. And, um, you know, that's why it's kind of good to learn about them individually before doing the antibodies panel out. 
Okay. But it'll make the more antibody panels you do, the better sense it'll make. More than just sitting here and saying, well, this is homozygous and that's heterozygous. And um, like the more you do it, because then you can look at the reactions and see the different reactions based on their homozygous or heterozygous. But I know when we were talking about, um, we talked about it when we were doing the indirect paternity testing. And that's the one where they assume that African Americans are either, either um, that they're usually heterozygous, so FYA, and then either just Duffy or Duffy B. And that's the one that can cause there's some problems. And then your Duffy antibodies. But remember, Duffy is your, your weird one when it comes to that heterozygous and homozygous because it has the, um, either Duffy, which is just FY, or Duffy B, which is FYB. And you pretty much have to assume what the genotype is unless you do genetic testing. So you've got your antibodies are going to be anti-FYA. Or anti-FYB. They're going to be IgG. So is that clinically significant? Uh, yes. Yes. And this is generally going to be in the cases of delayed hemolytic transfusion reactions. So remember, delayed hemolytic transfusion reactions for Duffy. And it can also um, cause HDFN, but that's not common. It does not bind complement. and is often found at the antiglobulin phase. And the way I have to remember Duffy, if it doesn't click for you, it doesn't click for you and that's okay. Um, but I always remembered Buffy, the vampire slayer. Um, that they have to get all the FYI, their info. So, you know, for uh, FYI is for your information, and so Buffy has to get all the information. And so Duffy, which sounds like Buffy, is F, Y, A, and B. And again, if it doesn't click for you, there's other ways I'm sure to remember it as well. And then um, Buffy, the Vampire Slayer, destroys with enzymes.
So Duffy is destroyed with enzymes. And then, you know, you know, vampires, they have all these tricks and, and things and garlic and all that stuff to ward them off. So the vampires so, show dosage, depending on what kind you got. 